So hello everyone. Some people have asked me to show them how to build their own do changer and so this is going to be some instructions on how to build your own. So what you need for this build is brass inserts first, which are, if I manage to get them to focus, these guys. I'll talk a little bit more about these because they need to be a specific kind of brass inserts. And you also need four magnets for each tool plate you have. The kind doesn't matter as long as neodymium or whatever that's called. And the size I use is seven by three millimeters. Three millimeters being obviously the thickness. If you don't have any the same kind of magnets, you can just insert the parameters into my Fusion 360 file, so you can use any magnet you want. But you might have to do some slight editing if it's too big compared to mine. But I can use 8mm or even 5. So yeah, I require something that's strong. And you also need two bra two dowel pins, 5mm dowel pins for each tool dock. I mean you have to dock, you use it to dock the tools, so you need those. And something about the brass inserts that I need to mention is that they have to be the proper kind or else they'll fail horribly. So this first type you see is the common injection molding style. These style of brass sensors work really bad for 3D printing and it's just generally not a good idea to use them in 3D printing. As you can see they only have vertical stripes, which means they can only resist torque out but they easily pull out. All well, the second type of brass sensors you use are these guys. As you can see they are much higher quality and they have diagonal I guess, is that what you call them? They have like just not vertical, like 45 degree. I dropped it. They have this kind of like cuts on them, which makes it resist the pull out force very greatly. And these work very reliably and very well, in my opinion. In my experience, I guess that's the more correct term. And they even have a little chamfer on the edge to make it easy to insert and then insert it with your hot iron iron because they don't like fall out very easily. So they always stay centered too. These types of brass inserts are not expensive, but they are hard to find, so, pile, so I apologize for using these. But at the time I was in a hurry, and I didn't want to like try to figure a way to put a nut somewhere in there, because it was kind of hard. But yeah, as long as you get these, you will be fine. If you can't find this, you might be able to tr get the same effect by putting some super glue around these before you insert it. So now we'll get to the printing the parts. First, you need one tool change adapter, one tool change hot end adapter, and one dock. And that's literally it, all you need. And each of them takes around an hour, so three hours of printing in total. And if you have two tools, you need another adapter. But sadly, you're very likely to need my sudden assembly for your printer because it has like a little antenna that helps you dock your tool when you are trying to, you know, dock them, I guess. You do definitely need the antenna, unless you design your own card, which is very easy. You just need two slightly angled pins. That's it, really. So, I'll, there's one issue though, and that is also that you might want to download and print my carriage. This is just a random carriage that I don't like, and also burnt it. Long story. But, as you can see, the, the usual Hevo carriages have only four slots. I mean, they have four slots, but they are three millimeter slots made for dowel pins. While my carriage has a four millimeter hole on each side that slightly that gets to three millimeters when it gets deeper, so it supports both pins and brass inserts. And for the tool changer, you need to put on brass inserts here. But don't worry, if you don't have, don't want to spend the time to print my carriage, there's a simple easy fix. You get a drill bit, four millimeter. You measure five are the length of your brass inserts, because if they're longer, you have to measure longer. You put a tape here as a marker, and you literally just drill them. You can even do it by hand, because ABS is kind of soft, at least I use ABS. It's easily cuts. It's gonna be hard by hand, so if you have drill, do it there, like that. I don't know. You have to drill it there and insert four brass inserts into each of these pins. pins. And that's literally it. That's all you need to mod your carriage. So you can easily do it. After you do that, it's pretty self-explanatory. 
You just screw... This is another actually carriage. This is the original Havel carriage. Which is modified for nuts. But anyway. After you do that, you just kind of screw it in. Pretty simple. As you can see, you just screw it on. Like that. There are four screws and one in the middle. The one in the middle is not necessary, but yeah, this did it. And I've even put a nut place kind of here so you can do it this direction if you don't want to do it from here for whatever reason. But yeah, as I said, it's pretty simple. But before you screw these into the carriage, you need to install your magnets into these slots. So my slots are designed to be press fit, which works very well, but I recommend you to put some to super glue in case it doesn't work out well. I mean, in case it falls out, I mean. So yeah, just put some super glue there, put it inside the vise and just tighten the vise until it gets stuck in there very nicely. If you are not a fan of that method, you can just like add like 0.2 or 3 millimeters depending on your printer to the whole size and it will go in very nicely. And something else that you have to keep in mind is that the polarity of the magnets matters. So it doesn't matter if it's technically like actually south or north. You just put one side here, one side here, the opposite here, the opposite here. So if we just call one plus and another one minus, it would be plus, plus, minus, minus. See? And you do the opposite of that on your, on your like, what's it called? The assembly, the hot and assembly tool plate. And I do have one with the plate already integrated, so you have to spend less time printing, like you get an hour less printing, approximately. And so if you wanna, you can just easily just print the other one made for the tool changer. But you might have some issues using that with normal non-tool changer, but I mean, if you're building this, you want the tool change, right? So no reason to not go with that. So yeah, and after you do that, you're pretty much done with the assembly. It's very easy and it only takes like an two hours at most. And here I'm just showing you the parts that you have to print in my Prusa slicer view guess thingy. Just so you can see it. I do recommend you to print the tool change carriage adapter kind of slowly and accurately because you want the pins to not be kind of you know all stringy and awful and uh, I was gonna mention something else yeah it's kind of hard to print just so many separate I, I guess island pins but it works out very fine don't worry about so it. for this first you measure the distance between the extrusion the top front extrusion of your printer with with the, the dock antenna, in the middle of the dock antenna, with your calipers, and write that down. Afterwards, you want to enter, the, enter this parameter into the Fusion 360 dock file. After you are done, insert the two dial pins into your dock. After you are done with that, take your carriage and put it on manually with the magnets, and just pretend you are docking it. So just move it by hand to the right of the pins, and slide it left until it leaves a dent. Drill a 5mm hole into the dent you just made. And then countersunk the holes with a 6mm drill. And congrats, that's all. You're done with your tool changer. 